All right. Hello. Uh, welcome to our UMass Informed Speaker Series. I'm Rodrigo Mercado, and we are here with Professor James Orland from the MIT Sloan School. Uh, he's best known for studying faster algorithms for uh, network and combinatorial optimization problems. We're here to ask you some questions about uh, academic life, uh, grad school, and uh, yeah, so thank you for joining us. We, we appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, first question. Uh, why did you choose to pursue a, a career in academia? Well, I've been in academia a long time, and when I started out, I originally wanted to be a uh, you know, wanted to go into mathematics. And I went to graduate school at, in math at Caltech. And then after a year, decided that I really wanted to get a little bit more applied. So I went to Combinatorics and Optimization at Waterloo. And then after a year there, decided I wanted to get more applied. So I went to the Department of Operations Research at Stanford and really ended up liking doing research. And I liked teaching and it was, pretty simple decision. So uh, when I got a job at MIT, that's really been the only job I've ever had. <laughs> it's I've been there for almost 40 years now. Yeah. That's great, yeah, so you got lucky you found what you really like. Um, and I thought about it and would I have enjoyed something else? And the answer is I'm really glad I didn't have to choose. I really like what I'm doing. I'm not sure I would have enjoyed other things nearly as much. Great. Okay, so uh, you have helped to develop and improve the solution for airline, ra railroad scheduling, telecommunications, and other applications. So uh, how important do you think it is uh, to work on real-world applications when thinking about new research? Well, it depends a lot on what you want to accomplish. But I'd say within the area of operations research, uh, I would strongly recommend for students that they work on problems that are both of practical interest and have really strong theoretical um, aspects that where they can do interesting theoretical work on applied problems. But I will admit that for my own research, a lot of it has been on very basic problems that is not so applied. And I love doing that. And I've also done a lot of applied research, but mostly with other people who know the applications much better than I do. So what I recommend to students isn't really the way I live my life necessarily, <laughs> but I would recommend that students think hard about what's really interesting about applications. Okay. All right, okay, and so speaking of students, um, when you have a new uh, PhD students coming in, uh, what skills do you wish the most that they, they had or they, they knew? I'm, I'm a believer that having lots of skills is a good idea. And our students are usually very talented. So it's not that I wish they had skills they don't have. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the skills, you know, obviously we want them to be very smart. Uh, we like them to be very hardworking. Um, we like them to be a strong math background. And we, we like it when they have interest in applications. If they know things about applications, that's also quite useful. But just having an interest in learning about applications is good. Um, and then one skill that might not be quite as obvious for a PhD student, um, but I think is really useful is their ability to collaborate and their ability to empathize with others, right? Because mm -hmm. normally one can imagine academics as being people who work in isolation uh, and work on their own research. That is becoming less and less common as the mode of operating. There is so much research that goes on these days in operations research, industrial engineering, business analytics, that's collaborative. So it's really important that people be willing to share with others, care about others. Sure. Um, yeah, now everything's multidisciplinary. Right. And, and, and in fact, 
with Operation Research, I've often done projects, as I said, with people who know way more about the applied area than I do. Uh, and that's great. You know, I like it when my colleagues bring to bear lots of information that I just can't possibly know myself. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, well, uh, thank you for taking the time for this interview. Thank you for the uh, presentation that you gave us earlier. It was a really great time you were here. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and it's been a pleasure.